on space art. So I'm going to create a new document and I'm going to call it space art mood board. And I'm going to make it 14 by 11. I know some people are following along. Some people are taking notes, so I will try not to speed through this, but at the same time, let me know if you need me to slow down or stop. Okay, so here we go. Here's my new document ready to go. I'm going to reset my workspace, uh, going to workspace and choosing reset essentials. And the only thing I'll do here is just pull off my tools and set them up in a double column situation. So space art. Whenever I design anything that has text on it, uh, space art, whenever it has text on it, is what I'll do first. I'll type my text. So I'll type here space art. And I know I made it really tiny. And I'm going to select the text. I'm going to come over here into the type size field and just use the up arrow. If I hold the shift, up and press up arrow, I can make the type really quickly. Quickly, And maybe I want to have another piece of text here. I'm going to make another little box for a slogan or some such thing. And again, I'm going to use the type tool. I do want to mention that there's two ways to use the type tool. One is just to click on it and then you'll create a flashing cursor. Another way, and that would be what's called line type or type in a line, the other way to start type is to create a box, and that's called area type. So I'm making this on area type. I can see the type, the size is going to be massive. I really don't need it to be that big. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to type 80, 80 before I type anything, and click in the field. And now I'm going to write slogan or something. Slogan or something. I know, it's exciting. Starts out slow, and then it gets pretty darn exciting. All right, space art. So I know I'm going to be working with some text, and maybe, I don't know, I might need another piece of text. And so here I'm just going to put a number, because I like the number 8. I'm typing 8. And there I have some elements to work with. Move this over here. The next thing I'm going to create is a color palette. If I looked at some space art, which is a pretty easy thing to do here in the world of instant gratification images, I would see the skies of different planetscapes, beautiful gorgeousness. I think I want to do mine a little bit about space junk. I think that would be fun for me to do a space junk topic. So the colors that I want to use, I will define those now. If you need help picking your colors and it makes you feel better, you can do something like this. I am going to just right in here, right in this area, I'm going to take a screenshot. Shift Command 4 and I'm going to now take a little clip right here. It should have made a noise. And then I'm going to go back into Illustrator and do file place. Here we go. File place, 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 file place. Boom. Oops. Now it shouldn't, it could happen, but it shouldn't go in this box. Let's see, make sure, I hope it doesn't do that because that box is selected. If I click place, nope, it didn't, thank you. So notice that my cursor now says one of one. If this document was a multi-page document of some other kind, I might have one of four. You could select four images in Illustrator and go click, drag, click, drag, click, drag, click, drag. That's kind of neat to know. And I'll show you that another day. But it's one of one. And so there's my color. Now, these are nice for just some basic feeling. And I am not being really choosy, as you can tell. I'm whipping through it. And I'm whipping through it because uh, I really want you to see the process more than I'm interested in showing off my design skills right now. I want you to see more about a technique for building something. So I really don't want those little bits to show. And so what I'm doing here is I'm creating some white boxes. 
is just a little silly notion of mine to have these edges be clean. Is there, a crop there is a crop option, but it's more like paste inside of another shape, and that's called a clipping mask, and I'm not going to do that right now. This doesn't really require a clipping mask because it's not a real formal illustration. It's just a mood board. So I'm going to group this object group. I will show you that. Do not worry. Okay. So that's object group. Group. Now this is one piece, and so I can move it around if I need to. In addition, I'm going to now create some pa color palettes in Illustrator. So you can see I can move that around as one piece, and that just makes me feel happy. Okay. So it's one piece. And I'm going to select some color from this. So I want to have some color tools open. I'm going to go to New Window and go to Color. Hello, Color. Color is represented in Models. Color Models. I'm going to close this theme situation and this Guides thingy. Those are going away. Because I want to talk about the color box briefly as well as show you how to save swatches. If I click on this uh, little squares box, that gives me the swatches panel, and now I'm ready to go. I'm happy because I have the tools that I need to save my color. You might notice that there are existing colors in the palette. If you find yourself strongly about getting rid of these colors, you can actually hold the Click on one, hold the shift key down, and select a whole bunch of them, and then you can throw them away. I am now deleting all of these swatches. You should not delete the top row because these are key colors used in CMYK and RGB. And again, I will talk about that another time. I'm getting rid of these three. This is just to, for fun, just to show you that you can. I'm going to keep these because that's a nice grayscale palette, and obviously this is the main chromatic scale or red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, the chroma, chromatic scale. So I don't really need that. I'll delete that. Goodbye. Now I'm going to save my own colors. I'm going to press the letter I. The letter I gives me the I draw. And I'm going to start with what I think is the darkest color I want and select it, move my cursor over into the swatches panel, or rather move my swatch down into the colors. Now, I'm not going to go into this group of grayscale stuff, or is it? Yeah, that's all in that folder. And in a little while, I'll move all my colors into their own folder. So eye for eyedropper, and I think this is probably all pretty much the same purple. I might do better if I zoomed in, press the Z key for zoom, or the zoom tool right there. And I'm clicking, and eye for eyedropper, and I'm just going to grab a few more colors. I'm going to get this lighter purple and this magenta. I'm just dropping these colors down into my palette, except this one doesn't want to go. There we go. And here I want this pink color, or maybe uh, just looking at these two squares as I choose my colors. Okay. <clears throat> and I want to dump this color in here. So I'll just drop it down here. You can also move them around. You can move them around. There we go. Right. Now, I know I have white up here, but maybe I want this very pale blue. It's a lot of color. Space is colorful. Okay. And I'm going to scoot over here. I'm almost done picking colors. I think I just need a few more. One, another dark blue. And go. It's just I'm having a little mouse issue here. All right, there we go. And this is probably not black. It's probably a very dark blue, so I'll take that color. I can also drag it from this palette, which generally works better for me, this palette here. I probably need a color in between there. I'm going to guess that it's this one. All right, I do have that. All right, zooming out, Command-0, Z for zooming in, click and drag. And I don't know, this does not really look like space colors to me. Working. So over here on the far side of this artwork, if I use my direct selection tool, there was a rectangle here. Remember I put it there? So I'm going to press S for scale and see if I can drag this over. Now over here is a scale tool, but there's also a, tail, a tool under here called Free Transform 
that's a nice tool for just doing a very quick transformation. So I should be able to just pull this over. And that is still inside the group. So when I clicked on it, I clicked on it with this white arrow. This is called the direct selection tool. And it selects objects within groups or points within objects. As opposed to this black arrow tool, which selects entire groups, that's an entire group, or single objects. So this is the main selection tool. It selects individual objects and a group. Whereas this guy here is the direct selection tool. The direct selection tool is used to refine shapes. So if I have a shape such as a rectangle, which is what I did a moment ago, I can use this direct selection tool to click on the edge and move that around. That's the white arrow tool. Okay, just putting it out there. All right, so pressing V will give me the main or selection tool or the move tool. Selecting something is clicking on it. S is the scale tool. Now with this artwork, I want it to scale from this corner, not just from anywhere. So I'm going to lock it down by clicking one time in this corner and then coming over to the other corner and dragging out, holding the shift key. Now I'm stretching it proportionately from that space so I don't have to move it around a whole lot. Arrow keys to move things, shift arrow to move things 10 pixels at a time. Again, I'm pressing S for scale, and then I'm going to click here in this corner, and then I'm going to come over to this corner. So as long as I'm watching my little black cursor and it doesn't go off the page, I know that my layout is fitting on the page. So little eagle eye thingies like that are helpful. So now I have all my colors there, but I want to represent them a little bit differently. And in fact, I think I want this to bleed off the edge. So I'm going to put this over the edge. And again, yes, one more time. I'm going to scale this. All right. Now, if I wanted to look at what this is going to look like printed, as opposed to in Illustrator, down here at the very bottom of the tools panel is this thing called normal screen mode. That's what we're in now. Full screen mode with menu bar versus full screen mode. So I'm going to press full screen mode and that did not help at all. I'm going to press the space bar and I want it to hide my my art uh, my artboard. So under preview, I probably might just want to go Z for zoom. And I'm just going to click and drag and get a better idea of what I'm designing here. Just to bring the point home, seriously, I'm going to select all these white pieces holding the shift key and using the white arrow tool. These are all the panels within my, what I'm calling my blocker or my cropper. Press I for the eyedropper and click to select this gray color. This is like an old graphic design illustrator trick. So now they're all matching the same color as the artboard. And when I come up to the edge here with this, I can get that cropping that I want to see while I work and not just in a mode so that makes me happy too. All right, good enough, happy with that. So now I am gonna start laying out my colors. I wanna create something that's gonna be exciting to the viewer and I may not at this stage have an exact idea in mind, but to be close enough, I'm gonna start with a rectangle. And with this rectangle, I'm gonna choose one of my existing colors, this dark, dark blue and click and drag this shape over. The shift key will keep it lined up to the other one and the option key will let me copy it. So now I have two the same and I will click on this magenta swatch hold the shift key and select both of these. I have two uh, colors selected. I might want to do a couple of things at this stage and this is completely up to you. I'm going to show you a couple of things now. I'm selecting the blend tool, it lives right below the gradient tool. And I'm going to press the option key and click one corner. Option click, you can do it, there it comes. And I get the blend options dialog box. From the dialog box, I'm going to choose specific steps and I want to see three different colors generated between these two. So when I click OK and I click the opposite one, and remember I am making a recording so you don't need to worry if you're not going to remember everything. It should be now click, click. I don't know why it's doing a spin. It really seems like it should not be doing that. Um, one more time for the folks at home. Click, 
click. There we go. All right, so now I have my four little color strips. And here's the interesting part about this tool. If I select this one with the sub selection tool or change its width, the others will change width as well. And I can play around with this blend. It's kind of a nice thing. Now I have a couple other colors I didn't choose. I might want to have those in here too. There is a good chance I will want to be able to sample this when I'm making my poster. And what I mean is I'm now copying the shape with the white arrow tool holding the option key to make a copy and it's blending. So instead I'm going to just make a new rectangle. You may want to use this piece of art that you're making right now, this mood board, to sample specific colors. And it may become necessary when you're doing design for clients to have this around when you're working. So now I just sampled this pink color by selecting this box and clicking in this pink. I want to keep it in the palette, so I'll drop it down. Okay. All of that aside, all of these colors may or may not really exist in this palette, but this kind of gave me a hint as to what I might want to do. And you might want to add some other things, like if I just made a square here, maybe I want to just look at this blue and a couple of other blues that will accompany the design. To make this more of a piece of fun to look at artwork. Okay, And last one, option drag, and the lightest blue. If I select this magenta one and move it closer to the others, they all move together. That's part of the blend tool. And I'll just move these over. So these are my colors. Awesome. Now the other element that I might want to add to this is a gradient. So it seems like I'm using up a lot of space right now, but I'm really not too worried. I'm going to create one more box. And with this last box, I'm going to come over to the gradient tool by clicking on it in the tool panel. Click. And then if I double click it, it opens up the gradient sub panel. And then, here we go, if I click on this blue color with my sub-select tool, my white arrow, try that again, it should now show up here, and I'm going to drag it over to my gradient. So if you were not watching, that's a cool thing to know, and I'll show it to you again. So I'm going to click away, making sure my sub-selection tool is selected. I'm going to choose this pink box now and I'm going to take this and drag it onto my gradient. So I used, and now that I got filled with this color, which is a whole different story, uh, but here I'm going to put it back to the pink color, and here, this gradient, I want to keep it. To keep the gradient, I'm clicking and dragging it just like it was any other color and putting that box, really I am, putting that box over in the palette. It does not want to go, or is it just because it's not showing gradients? Now down here there is a control. This could mess you up. It says, show all swatches, show gradient swatches. Can I see my gradient swatches? It's not showing me any. Show all swatches. Let's try that again. Gradient should be adding it to the palette, and it is not doing that. So I'm going to undo and make sure that it is... I'm going insane. All right, so there. It finally went in there. I don't know why it's giving me trouble tonight. My computer's probably tired. So I'll select this and choose the gradient and there's my gradient. Oh, it looks like it had a black in it. Don't want that. Pulling out the black. And again, I'm saving this correct gradient over here. Boy, you're just really mean to me tonight, Illustrator. What has happened to my world? Click. Click and drag. All right, sure. So I'm going to click on this one and delete it because I don't want that one and no, and then I will choose this one, and yes, and then I'll choose this one. All right, things are improving. All right, so there's my gradient. Now I have some different examples of what I might want to have my color look like. Now I have some illustrations of maybe what I want the feel of my work to look like. Now I want to go ahead and work on the fonts. So saving my file. It is now saving my file and I'm saving it on my desktop because that's just a safe place to keep it and I'll click save and I'll click OK. So it is called Space Art and is saved to my desktop. I'm going to stop this recording and